Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Nine Sigma webinar for the NCGA Consider Coring Challenge. Uh, my name is Jonathan Yakusha from Nine Sigma, and I'll be your host and moderator today. Please note that this webinar is being recorded. The recording and transcription will be made available on the NCGA Consider Coring Challenge page. Let's review our agenda for today. After I introduce our speakers, they will discuss the project in greater depth. Then we'll take some time addressing your questions during a live Q&A session, followed by a brief summary of project information, including how to get more information or assistance. As we proceed through today's presentation, please feel free to ask your questions at any time. We'll keep track of your questions and respond to them during the Q&A portion of the webinar. Should you need any information or assistance outside of today's webinar, please feel free to contact the Nine Sigma Provider Help Desk at phd at ninesigma.com. If you didn't get that email, don't worry. I'll have that information for you again later on in today's webinar. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panelists today. First, from NCGA, we're joined by Jim Bauman, VP of Market Development, and Sarah McKay, Director of Market Development. Next, we have representatives from Biocognito and Vertimass. First, from Biocognito, we have Nathan Danielson, Principal. And from Vertimass, we have John Hannon, Chief Operating Officer. And from Nine Sigma, we're joined by Kevin Andrews, PhD, Senior Program Manager. Everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. We're looking forward to an informative presentation from you all. We'll begin with Sarah McKay from NCGA. Sarah, could you please give our attendees an overview of the NCGA? Great, thank you. Uh, we wanted to share a little bit first about our background and who National Corn Growers Association is. So we are a grassroots organization of um, 40,000 members from across the United States. We're a federation of our state corn grower associations and through this network, we represent the interests of all 300,000 corn farmers in America. NCGA's mission is to create and increase opportunities for our corn growers. From our perspective, one of the best ways we can create these opportunities is to continue to develop new markets for the corn we produce now and into the future. Next slide, please. In 2015, NCGA developed a strategic plan. As part of this plan, we developed and emphasized a renewed vision for American corn production, and that is to sustainably feed and fuel a growing world. To meet this vision, we set a strategic objective to establish at least three new uses for a minimum of 75 million incremental bushels by 2020. Accomplishing this task fell upon the growers and staff who make up our feed, food, and industrial action team who are also sponsoring this challenge. Now to tell you a little bit more about our motivation, I'll turn to Jim Bauman. We often hear, you know, why this challenge? Uh, to state it simply, uh, U.S. corn farmers need new sources of demand to meet their growing production efficiencies. Uh, the chart on the, on the screen uh, illustrates our annual carryout for the remaining annual volume of corn once demand was subtracted from production. Uh, as you can see, uh, corn farmers continue to produce uh, at a level that exceeds uh, demand, leaving us with a carryout uh, more recently approaching the 65 uh, million metric tons to almost 70 million metric tons. Uh, U.S. farmers are the most productive and sustainable producers of corn in the world and are strongly positioned to support new uses of corn uh, while continuing to exceed demand from traditional customers like animal ag, uh, food, and ethanol. Next slide. More importantly, U.S. corn farmers continue to do more with less. In the last 10 years, total production has grown by 12%, uh, while, while on 4.4% fewer harvested acres, thanks to a production yield that has grown by 17%. Uh, the overall result, an affordable, sustainable, and abundant feedstock for corn's customers. Once again, doing more, doing more with less. Uh, next slide. As we engaged our partners at Nine Sigma for the second Consider Corn Challenge, the first step was to once again decide how to focus the contest. Historically, the U.S. corn crop has been split into four primary markets, the largest being domestic livestock feed, followed by biofuel, exports, and the smallest piece of pie being food industrial products. Continued growth within these traditional markets is crucial for U.S. corn farmers. However, corn production efficiencies have outpaced these traditional markets 
and are, and are forecasted to continue to exceed demand in the future. NCJ's farmer leaders believe the bio-based chemicals industry represents the strongest potential source of new demand for U.S. corn. The combination of evolving consumer preferences, advances in processing technology, combined with the modern production of corn, positions corn extremely well uh, for this particular challenge. Great. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Sarah, as Jim mentioned, uh, NCGA ran a previous version of this challenge. Uh, could you tell some of our listeners about the outcomes for that first challenge? Absolutely. Yep. As mentioned, this will be our second Consider Corn Challenge. The first one launched in June 2017, and we announced the winners at Commodity Classic in February of 2018. We had uh, 33 submissions from eight countries. And our $150,000 prize pool was split between our six winners, with each receiving $25,000. On the screen, you'll see a list of our, our winners last year and a little bit about who they are. After winning the Consider Corn Challenge, many of our winners received further investment offers, uh, went on to receive additional uh, series funding, and others are gearing up for pilot plant phases. To tell you more about their experience with the last Consider Corn Challenge and where they are now, I'll turn it over to John Hannon from Vertimass. Yes, uh, good morning. Yeah, I thought there were three things I thought I'd mention about the, the contest that we found um, very fascinating. First was, you know, why did we apply? And um, the Vertimass technology is very interesting. It converts ethanol into hydrocarbons. And so we saw this as a, another way to potentially increase corn demand by bypassing the blend wall. So the idea was to convert ethanol, or make more ethanol, convert it to other hydrocarbons, such as gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel. And that, in turn, by, by bypassing the, the ethanol blend wall, would allow you to, to make more more corn in the United States and we just from a general standpoint we think you know the, this kind of growth is, is huge and we, so we thought number one that we fit very well into the contest and that's one reason why we applied and secondly was you know we thought the application uh, that we that we worked on was very good in regards to honing your story honing your technology really to make it as simple as possible so anyone not familiar with the field could could understand it and so we thought that was a, as, as a nice way to um to to go after this so those are the two main reasons why we we liked it and of course the the funds were great as well um, we were impacted by the award, you know, we uh, internationally as well as nationally in the United States, you know, it helped us talk to more more ethanol producers and um, kind of opened a lot of a lot more doors than, than we would expect. And I think this was kind of a filtering process for that, um, as well as internationally. I mean, we've, we talked to folks in Brazil. Um, who are interested in converting their ethanol into into jet fuel, for example. And, uh, you know, the the one thing that they do state is, hey, we, we saw you on this National Corn Growers Association, uh, you know, as a winner. So, we, you know, it's really opened up a lot of doors, kind of gave you a little bit of notoriety. And then I think finally, you know, the outcomes of the award, we've, we've really been using the cash prize to travel around to these potential um, clients that are interested in the technology. And that's been a great way to... Uh, to pay for these this this networking and travel, so um, yeah, that's kind of kind of what I th what I think about the award. It was very worthwhile, and uh, as you can see, my quote: "We saw this as a wonderful opportunity to showcase the technology and kind of our vision of it, and it really helped us network more and open more doors than otherwise uh, we would have been able to do." Great, thank you, John. Uh, turning back to Sarah from NCGA. Uh, we've heard about NCGA and the first Consider Corn Challenge. Could you tell our listeners about this newest challenge? Absolutely. So why the Consider Corn Challenge, too? We know that we're not alone in this belief about a new renewable future. There's a significant number of researchers like you that are out there looking at new ways to produce primary chemical building blocks. What we are asking for is researchers to share their ideas through this open innovation format. We will launch this challenge on October 30th, and we ask you to submit your proposals by March 20th. At that point, we'll have a panel of industry experts evaluate the proposals and help us select the ideas that win. We will publicly announce the winners at Bio World Congress in July 2019. Now I'll turn it back to John to tell you, or to Kevin Andrews with Nine Sigma to tell you more about how to participate in the challenge. Thanks, Sarah. So as far as your uh, participation, uh, there are a couple of assumptions for your proposed approach. You should use one of the corn components in this diagram. Uh, it can be either the corn kernel or any of its co-products. 
And the other one is that you have to already have demonstrated your proposed technology at laboratory scale, producing at least milligram quantities. You have to be already be working on your approach. Um, you're not going to just submit a concept. It has to be something in progress. And uh, as far as your your response, you'll receive better scores for the following. Potential for rapid commercialization, largest volume of corn used, empowering technology that provides access to a new market, fourth, demonstrable team history of success, developing a path to commercial or industrial scale for other projects. Fifth, the team has to uh, potentially identify matching funds of support or potential commercialization partners. And lastly, uh, providing a concise but impactful description of all of the above. Now, on the next slide, um, the technical information. So in terms of approaches that are not eligible, we are not looking for food. We are not looking for applications on sweet corn, and we are not looking for incremental approaches that just sort of bump, uh, you know, cause a little bump in, in utilization. We're looking for big impact. So uh, keep those in mind as you're uh, contemplating a response. The next slide. Your approaches need to uh, meet these, these key bullets. Uh, please refer to the challenge summary for a full description of the requirements for the challenge. Next slide. Actually, the next two slides uh, outline the elements of your response. It is important that you include all of the requested elements in that non-confidential response. If you leave something out, uh, you're at a disadvantage with respect to the other responses. Next slide. Okay, so just quickly uh, have a look at the, the rest of the submission requirements list there. And then we'll move to the following slide, which talks about the award. This uh, challenge two has an award of $150,000 that's going to be split equally between three to six winners, meaning that if there are six winners, they'll each get $25,000. And if there are three winners, uh, that they'll each get $50,000. But the, the, uh, the contest will, in fact, um, disseminate $150,000 to, to the uh, winning pool. Um, in terms of added funding, uh, there is an opportunity, potentially, that either the NCGA or its state or other partners could explore additional funding for your, your entry. And lastly, uh, the winners are going to be announced in July, on July 8th, at the BioWorld Congress in Des Moines, Iowa. Okay, great. Thank you, Kevin. It's now time for the frequently asked questions. These are questions that are either very common to Nine Sigma challenges or have already been asked via the Nine Sigma Provider Help Desk. Uh, I'll ask the questions and I'll pass them over to the appropriate respondent to reply to them. Our very first question. Uh, in the FAQs. What happens to my IP if I accept a prize? Uh, Kevin, how about you take that? Sure. Uh, you maintain ownership of your intellectual property. You're going to grant uh, permission to the National Corn Growers Association the right to examine that intellectual property as they determine um, the winners for the contest. And if you're a winner, you may be asked to sign a non-disclosure agreement with NCGA Please refer to the terms and conditions for the challenge, uh, specifically section nine. Okay, and, and actually, before we proceed to our next FAQ for our attendees, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit them via the Q&A chat box. We're coming up on that Q&A portion of today's webinar shortly, so we'll, we'll be getting to your questions in just a few moments. Uh, our next question, uh, I think might be best addressed to the NCGA. Who is going to the ultimate licensee of this technology? Can NCGA assign the IP to some company? Uh, Jim, would you like to take a crack at this one? Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so, so as, uh, as Kevin just stated, uh, the goal of the contest is not to assign any rights to the IP uh, to NCGA or our partners. The goal of the contest is to 
is to let NCJ highlight your, your project, your submission, and help make connections with uh, downstream partners, stakeholders, et cetera, that may be able to help commercialize your project. So at the end of the day, ultimately, we're just trying to help connect you, uh, bring a little bit of attention, media uh, recognition, et cetera, to your project, but ultimately, ultimately help you along that, that pathway towards commercialization, uh, making connections along the way. Okay, thank you, Jim. Uh, and I think our next question uh, might be a, a best addressed by NCGA as well. Uh, the prize doesn't seem adequate for funding my proposal. How will my proposal be funded? Uh, Sarah, would you want to take a ch chance on this one? Sure thing. So we recognize that the, the prize pool may not cover the full cost of implementing the proposal submissions and, and implementing the, the ideas, but what the value in this consider corn challenge and in addition to the prize is as you heard from john the value that we bring when it comes to making connections and also helping um with notoriety and bringing um, some media attention and, and connections out of winning this challenge great thank you sarah uh and for our last faq i think we'll turn back to kevin andrews from nine sigma uh kevin would a list of commercialization partners and why they would be a good fit be important so the short answer is yes Please uh, uh, include that in your response. Okay, very succinct. Thank you, Kevin. And just to just to add one other thing to all of these, um, this is Nathan Danielson. The reason that we wanted to do this at Bio is that we think that that will put the winners in front of a number of, of venture capital and other uh, stakeholders in this industry. And so it should give you a really nice opportunity to actually meet with people who can further your project either through funding or through um, strategic means. Great, thank you very much for that add-on. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for our attendees, uh, we are now proceeding to our Q&A portion of today's webinar. Uh, if you have a question, this is an excellent opportunity for you to get your questions answered directly by our speakers today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can ask your questions via the Q&A chat box. If you think of a question outside of today's webinar, don't worry, we'll have some information coming up in upcoming slides about how you can get information uh, back from our panelists. Um, if we don't get to your question during today's uh, webinar, again, don't worry. All the questions that are asked during today's webinar will be included with the transcript. So even if you don't hear your question answered live, it will be answered. You'll be able to get that information. So with that in mind, we'll begin with our very first question. Uh, first question is, is it possible to submit more than one idea? Kevin, I think we'll hand that one over to you. The answer is yes. Um, in doing so, please uh, use a slightly different title for each response so that we can tell them apart. In fact, it's helpful if you uh, include in your title, you know, number one and number two, for example. Great. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, our next question, I think, might be best addressed by representatives from NCGA. Uh, is there a preference for usage of one fraction of the kernel over a different fraction? Sure, I'd be happy to answer that. No, uh, as long as we're looking at total incremental grind, uh, increasing total incremental grind for, for growers, that's our goal. Growing that, growing that volume of corn that's being utilized, uh, whether that's through the kernel, um, well, I should say that back. The preference is for the kernel, um, and, 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 but as far as how that kernel is being, being uh, fractionated, et cetera, that's, that's really really up to the, the submission, uh, but really growing demand for the corn kernel. Now, while we, we are also open to uh, Stover and other things, uh, there, is, there is a slight preference uh, that would be given for corn kernel utilization. Great, thank you. Uh, our next question uh, stays with the NCGA team. Uh, do you prefer a more mature, ready for commercialization technology, or are all approaches of interest regardless of maturity? I think you touched yeah. on that a little bit. Yeah, this is Sarah. I'll take it. We we are open to, to all all stages. Um, you know, as mentioned, you have have been produced already. At, you know, a laboratory um, you know, in, the, in the milligram level, but we're open to to all phases and um, pathways along the journey to commercialization. Okay. Uh, in a previous slide, you mentioned uh, significant market demand. Could you give an explanation as to what you mean by significant market demand? Sure, yeah, I'll take that one. Uh, when we're talking about significant market demand, uh, we're, we're not talking about 
um, hundreds of bushels or thousands of bushels. Ideally, we're looking for tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of bushels of demand uh, for, for U.S. corn growers. Uh, on each year, our, our production uh, continues to increase through, through yield growth alone at about 150 million to 200 million bushels of corn each year. And that's just, just through the growth of the yield curve. Uh, so we're looking for, for projects that will help whittle that, that amount down. Uh, that's not to say that there's not some great uh, smaller uses of corn out there, but this contest is really focused on, on those that at least have the potential to move, move that needle. Okay. Uh, our next question has just come in. Uh, it's talking about IP. Uh, is it mandatory for the winners to work on the commercialization of their idea? Is it okay if, if the participant sells his or her IP after winning? From yes, uh, the answer to that would be yes. Uh, we we are we are here to help on that pathway to commercialization. Um, but once again, since the owner, ownership of the IP remains with the uh, submitters or, or those who, who submit the project, um, if, if there's a pathway there uh, for them to uh, sell that IP to another uh, company that helps get it to commercialization, uh, we, we support that as well. Uh, once again, that's that's one of the potential pathways that comes out of the uh, the media or the uh, the notoriety that comes from winning this contest. Um, it's, it's helping to make some of those connections. Okay, great. Uh, our next two questions actually deal with the, the development and development partners. Uh, our first question, uh, are you interested in approaches that do not currently have development partners? Yeah, yes, we're definitely definitely interested in those approaches as well. Uh, we realize that especially the earlier uh, earlier uh, phase of, 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 of new uses development, uh, you may not have fully vetted out that process as far as who you want to partner with. Um, it's a great opportunity for the contest to fit there as well. Um, and there's also an opportunity for NCJ and or our, our corn state uh, association partners to potentially become one of those partners uh, on that pathway as well. Um, so there's there's lots of options. Once again, it's it's really about getting getting information about your idea out to a broader audience, uh, giving it the recognition that it deserves, and then helping helping make those connections along along the pathway to commercialization. Okay, uh, Jim, building on what you just said about uh, options being available, uh, the next question is: uh, Will NCGA be able to identify possible commercialization partners? Is that an option that exists? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and as we've already touched upon a little bit, NCJ does uh, some uh, direct investment, as do our state corn associations. But more importantly, uh, we do have a network of uh, VC partners and industry partners out there uh, that have a history of, of investing in this area. Uh, so uh, depending, on, depending on the project, uh, we're able to help steer some of those conversations, make connections, um, and, and ultimately, try to uh, set the landscape that, that, that allows you to be successful moving forward. Okay, very good. Thank you, Jim. Uh, staying with the NCGA, uh, if selected as a winner, who would we demo the technology for? It, it, it really depends on, on the submission and the, and the project's focus. Uh, if it's if it's a technology, for example, like Vertimass, where you're looking to partner with ethanol, uh, ethanol producers as your feedstock for your, 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 your conversion, um, there's obviously opportunity to um, work with ethanol plants that we can, can get you in contact with to have those demonstration uh, situations. Um, depend, like I said, it really depends on what the, what the feedstock is being used and what the, 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 the biochemical is being produced as far as what that demonstration opportunity looks like. Uh, also, um, at the winners, if, if you're if you're selected as one of the winners, um, you will uh, there may be an opportunity at the uh, award announcement to further discuss some details about your your, your submission as well. The one thing I would say is that you know we aren't expecting through the submission process to see actual you know there's not an actual demonstration component to it so. There is the uh, option to put in a video if you'd like to show your process. We'd be very interested in seeing that. Um, and then just, you know, whatever uh, validation of scale, 
um, process, et cetera, you can put into your proposal is going to be very helpful, but there is not a, a demonstration per se component to it at the time of the um, contest, you know, at the time of the evaluation. Yeah, thank you, Nathan. Great, great point about the video. Uh, that's definitely been been beneficial for those that have submitted in the past. It helps explain very easily to the judges as far as uh, individual processes. So, Nathan, Jim, thank you very much. Our next question has just come in. Can you give an example of proposals which provide only incremental improvements for established commercial processes? I, I think the submitter is trying to understand. Uh, how they can determine whether or not their technology is an incremental improvement or a, a kind of a game-changing technology. Can you, can you guys speak to that a little bit? I'll take a stab at it, and I'm sure Nathan might jump in here as well, but one that pops to mind off the top of the head is um, small improvements in the fermentation of, of, of corn to ethanol. Uh, you know, the, that, that process is already getting close to its ther theoretical uh, max as far as the, con the efficiency conversion there. So there wouldn't necessarily be a lot of benefit to corn farmers by, by improving that efficiency as far as converting uh, corn to uh, more ethanol. Um, another one uh, along the same lines is any, any project that potentially replaces existing uh, products from corn. Uh, so that could be a, a, a corn-based chemical today uh, you have a new process that basically produces replaces on a one-to-one -one basis. Once again, not interested in those types of, of, of submissions. Um, ideally, uh, we're talking about um, more than um, we're talking about projects that will use more than than tens, hundreds, or even thousands of bushels of corn. We're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, or even millions of, of bushels of corn. Uh, those are the types of, of projects that we're really really interested. Nathan, anything you want to add to that? You know, the one thing I would say is is on, you know, changes to processes. If you can make the case that your change to a process will change the economics in such a way that, you know, it will make the product much more competitive, hence bring in more corn to be ground, that'd be really interesting. Um, so to the degree, you know, if you do have, you know, Jim mentioned ethanol, if you had something in the ethanol uh, process or something for a, a chemical that is going to change its um, its ability to reach the marketplace or in the case of a chemical if you have a, a second process that may set up where you know downstream users can go from uh, a producer one or a producer two and all of a sudden you know there is um, diversity in the marketplace those are I think those would be interesting as well it's just making that case that there's something about your product or your, your process and your invention that will make corn more exciting for the downstream users. And sometimes that may, you know, may just be a, a second approach to uh, a, a chemical. But we do need that case made. You know, if it's just um, displacing uh, a bushel for a bushel of corn ground, that's not going to be interesting. Nathan, Jim, thank you very much. Uh, our next question, uh, are there specific new markets that are considered more valuable than others? I, would, you know, I think, go ahead, Nathan. I would say on this, we are very interested in, in looking at uh, new industrial chemicals. So, you know, polymers, solvents, things of that nature. Um, probably are, are of greatest interest. Um, but again, um, the last time we ran this, we were impressed with the range of really interesting uses. So at the end of the day, what we're trying to do for the growers is to use more of their corn. Um, and so, you know, if you've got something that doesn't fit perfectly into a bucket, as long as it uses a significant amount of corn, it's going to be of interest. Great. Jim, did, was there anything that you wanted to add there? Uh, Nathan, Nathan covered that perfectly. Fantastic. Then we will move on to our next question. Uh, our next question is, uh, will NCGA fund non-US-based projects? Yes, since the, since the contest is open globally, um, we, we are open to those submissions outside the US. Um, ultimately, the, the goal is that 
uh, or, or I guess there should be preference in the submission that has potential pathway as far as how it may impact U.S. corn, ultimate demand for U.S. corn. Uh, but we realize that the uh, the U.S. is not necessarily the only uh, country in the world that has scientists and or innovators that are looking into uh, ways to convert corn into bio-based chemicals. Okay. Uh, our next question, um, for the individual that submitted this question, uh, if I don't quite get the intent of your question, please feel free to resubmit the question and we'll try to get to it again uh, and get you the information that you're looking for. Uh, this particular question I think is going to whether or not this would be something of interest to the, uh, to the challenge. Uh, I would be interested in organic byproducts extracted from corn, particularly chiral chemicals. Is that something that would be within the scope of the contest? Uh, again, for the person who, who submitted that question, if I'm missing the intent of, of your question, please let us know. Uh, I'm happy to take this one, Jim and uh, Sarah. That would be absolutely interesting. You know, that's one of those things that I think um, could drive corn by improving the process economics and, you know, obviously chiral, uh, chirality and getting chiral molecules uh, has the potential to have uh, very big uh, benefits for producers, so absolutely. Okay, very good. Um, we do seem to have slowed down a bit in the questions coming in. Uh, I think we've got uh, maybe one or two more questions. Uh, so we'll go ahead and go through those. Uh, as those questions are coming in, uh, for our attendees, uh, as I said, if you have questions, please avail yourself of this excellent opportunity to get your questions answered. Uh, likewise, if you think of a question outside of today's webinar, uh, on an upcoming slide here, we'll have information about how you can request uh, additional assistance. Okay, our next question uh, to Jim from NCGA. Uh, will NCGA consider joining an already existing pilot effort of corn to bio-based chemicals? Yes, uh, the, the contest is open uh, for the entire development pathway. Uh, so if you are closer to that pilot phase or closer to commercialization, uh, definitely interested in hearing about those those projects as well. Uh, you know, we, once again, we realize that the prize money may, may not be um, the, the biggest prize pool out there. It may not necessarily be what drives that pilot process forward by any means. But once again, the, the connections, the publicity that comes from potentially winning this contest would definitely be beneficial, I think, to uh, a, a project that's even in the pilot phase. Okay. Uh, our next question uh, actually jumps back a little bit uh, regarding non-U.S. projects. Uh, for the representatives from NCGA, are you prepared to say how many non-U.S. projects you have funded? Uh, so based out of last year's competition, uh, there would have been, out of the six winners, uh, there was one uh, that had both a, a U.S. and a European presence. So I, I guess in that situation, I'd say there was one that was a outside the U.S. Um, company. Um, so yeah, we, we have a history at least of, of being open to those in the winner's pool. Um, once again, the key there is in your submission, uh, sharing how your process uh, could pos positively impact corn grind in the U.S. and the overall corn industry. Um, if it's a if it's a process that's only specific to a specific corn industry outside the U.S., probably not as exciting to us. But if it's a new process that can help grind additional corn in the U.S., uh, then then definitely it's something that's interesting to us. And I think it should be noted too that you know we did not have a whole lot of of um, proposals from outside the U.S. I believe we had either three or four. So the outside of the U.S. ones had a pretty high level of, um, of a, a pretty high hit rate. Good point. Uh, Jim, Nathan, uh, kind of just off the top of my head here, if a proposed technology was not really um, all that different, but it represented access to a new market for NCGA, would that be uh, something of interest you said you know uh, really new technologies but an existing market but what if it was a 
a market that NCGA typically doesn't have access to, would that be something of interest? I think it, it, it would be of interest, uh, but, but there has to be some pretty detailed explanation as to why, um, why the new approach um, may work uh, for this new market. Um, you know, if it's the same technology that's been around for quite a while and it's more just having a connection in that market, not quite as maybe as interesting as uh, a, a technological tweak that does make it more interesting for that new market. And, and Nathan, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add to that. No, I think that, that sums it up. Okay, great. Uh, we've gotten a few more questions coming in. Uh, what if I'm not selected as a winner for this challenge? Uh, will NCGA still help find funding? Or could NCGA help find funding? Uh, absolutely. The answer to that is de definitely a, a yes. Uh, and we've actually did that with last year's submissions as well. Um, following the announcement of the winners, uh, we, we went back through all the submissions and worked as, as, as hard as we could to help make connections, uh, make introductions uh, for those submissions as well. And also review them to see if there were some uh, that NCJ uh, or state partners may be interested in as well. So um, by, by no means, if, if you're not one of the announced winners, uh, does that necessarily mean that there's not efforts uh, underway to help, help try to make some connections as well? Okay. Uh, this next question kind of goes to information included in a response. Is it up to the participant to predict the market value for a proposed solution? Uh, and a follow-on is what if the participant is unable to do so uh, given the resources and or data that is currently available? So yes, uh, we do have a preference that the submitters at least take a stab um, at, at what the uh, the market potential may be for their product, um, realizing that uh, they may not necessarily be, be perfect in that, in that estimation. Uh, the key there is, is providing enough detail as far as how they built their, uh, their estimation for their, their, for their market potential uh, so that we can, we can back into that. Um, also, uh, and, and Kevin, actually, I'll, I'll defer to you, um, if there are specific questions along those lines, um, is there, I can't remember, did, did Nine Sigma provide a little bit of support in that area as well? Um, no, not in the last contest. Okay. But I, yeah. The one thing I might say is that, you know, the judges that we will ultimately have um, reviewing these documents are going to be um, experts in the field, and we anticipate that they will have some market knowledge um, that they'll bring to bear. Certainly that happened last time. So, um, you know, I would encourage people to do their best guess to, you know, show your math um, and then to the degree possible, we'll be able to have um, some analysis and, you know, determine if, uh, you know, even if you're not exactly right on, on the market size, market numbers, pricing, et cetera, I think we can see if it's you know moves the needle in the right direction pretty easily. Okay, uh, it looks like we have just one more question, so we'll go ahead and ask that question, uh, and then we'll proceed to telling our attendees where they can get additional information uh, should they need it. Uh, our next question, I think, goes to um, whether or not a particular approach would be of interest. Uh, the submitter says we have developed a process for adding tapioca starch to rubber. Uh, the question is whether or not using a corn starch added to rubber, if that would kind of be in scope for this particular challenge. Again, to the attendee who submitted this question, if I've missed the intent of your question, please let us know. If we don't get it, uh, get your information today, we will still include it in the transcript. I think the short answer on that would be yes. Um, so long as they can kind of show what the value of the, the starch would have and, you know, kind of anticipate <clears throat> what size, uh, you know, what size market they might have if it's, you know, um, but it, it, and, and they can use the, the tapioca numbers. I think the one thing that would be important on this is if they're not going to demonstrate um, that they've done actual cornstarch, they should do an analysis where they talk about why they believe cornstarch would be a good um, surrogate for tapioca starch in this application. Okay. 
All right. Uh, so for our attendees, it looks like uh, we have exhausted all of your questions at this time. Uh, with that in mind, I will proceed to our next slide. Uh, again, as I've said several times, uh, don't worry if you think of questions outside of today's webinar. The next slide will have some additional information for you. So to our attendees, what can you do today? Uh, first and foremost, you can visit the Consider Coring Challenge 2 webpage. Uh, the URL is up on your screen there. Uh, click on that page and you'll have access to a whole host of information uh, about this particular challenge. Also, while you're there, uh, if you don't already have a Nine Sites account, that would be your first step in order to respond. Click in the upper right-hand corner, click on the register button, complete the registration process. Once you do that, you are in a position to begin working on your response. Uh, don't feel like you need to complete your response all in one go. The system saves automatically as you're advancing through the online response form, and you can get access to your drafts via your control center, and you'll find your control center in the uh, top row of your page. So what happens if you need help outside of today's webinar? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Uh, you can contact the Nine Sigma Solution Provider Help Desk uh, either via email or by phone. Uh, the email address is phd, that's phd as in provider help desk, at ninesigma.com. In your email, let us know what your questions are. If they're technical questions, we will refer them to NCGA. If they're more process related questions, Kevin can answer those. But one way or another, we'll get you the information that you're looking for. Likewise, if you have any questions and you want to give us a call, you're more than welcome to do that. The phone number is area code 216-283-3901. That number again, one, one more time, is 216-283-3901. Please feel free to reach out to us and let us know what questions or concerns you have, and we'll get you the information that you're looking for. And last and certainly not least, the submission deadline. The deadline to submit your response for this challenge is March 20th, 2019 at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. That's a Wednesday. Please be sure to submit your response in advance of that time. We can't take any submissions after that time. So I strongly encourage you, if you're interested in responding to this challenge, log in. If you haven't already done so, create your Nine Sites account and begin working on your response. As I said, you can work on it in several different uh, periods of time and come back to your, your saved drafts and go from there but you just have to make sure that you've submitted by that 5 p.m. deadline. Uh, as I said, we won't be able to take any late submissions. With that in mind, I'll go ahead and close out today's session. Uh, to our panelists from NCGA, Biocognito, and Vertimas, thank you all very much for joining us. To Kevin Andrews, thank you very much as well. Uh, this final reminder, today's webinar was recorded. The recording and transcription will be made available on the Consider Coin Challenge 2 webpage in just a few days. Thank you all very much for your time today. We look forward to reading your responses. Have a great day.